Welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television where you, the MSME, get center stage. This is ETNAS special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and center on every industry and area that matters to you. Tonight on the show, a panel of experts will answer your questions and later on, on the other side of a very short break, we'll put the spotlight on Tyno. That's on our small giant segment tonight. Prabhakar Dalal, the former ED of the Exim Bank, as well as Manish Bansal, CEO of SME Value Advisors, answering all the questions some of our viewers have sent in to us. Do stay tuned. At the end of this episode, we'll tell you how you too can send us any questions you may have for our experts. Manish, Mr. Dalal, thank you so much for being here tonight uh, with us to run our viewers through all of our queries. A lot of queries that have come in tonight. So. Let's kickstart this with uh, our first query. That's a Facebook query coming to us from Bhavik Agarwal. Bhavik has written to us on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow and ETNA is where you can also leave your comments. He says he's in the IT field. His question tonight for our experts, he wants to know how to create his brand value in a non-regulated market where there are people who say they can build a website for rupees 5,000. Also, how do we find members who are the right fit for our team? So when he's saying rupees 5,000, you presume it's a very small amount. I don't know what the actual cost will take, but I presume it's a really small amount. So how do you compete with someone in this space who is offering such steep discounts? Well, India is a large market. You will find people creating website for 5,000 and somebody will charge 500,000 rupees also. It depends on the, uh, the features which are there in the website, scalability, the quality, the navigability. And uh, you, he has to build his own uh, USP, what special features he provides or he caters to a specific uh, target segment and uh, that is how he can uh, develop his business. And with regard to the uh, right fit uh, for recruitment, uh, depending on the uh, kind of uh, website he creates, he can get people from technical institutes, uh, students who pass out from colleges doing computer application and he can uh, he, he will be able to recruit people uh, right for his kind of job okay so essentially if you are so cost conscious then you know you go with someone who's offering it really cheap but I presume that if you are willing to pay a little more the quality that you're going to get obviously is going to be so much more so there is going to be a market Manish yeah yeah so, uh, Sunanda, if you if you look at the very basic nature of the industry yeah. uh, you know Bhavik is in it's unregulated yeah. it's unorganized mm -hmm. very scattered mm -hmm low entry barriers because a technical guy who was working with you till yesterday may say I'm going on my own and start doing the website creation. Given all these dynamics of business and varied price points and not a consistent product, given all these features of the industry, you know, there cannot be a standard and that's the reason it's very difficult to create the brand because when you look at the brand philosophy, brand is all about delivering the consistent product and quality over a long period of time so that you could delight the customers. Then people relate with you and then you become a brand. So in this particular space, it's very, very difficult or I would say close to impossible to create something called brand. What you can do is, as Sir talked about, look at the geography you are in, try to you know do a good job, make the customer happy and look for the reference. That's the best I think one can look at in this particular business without being bothered what others are charging. That's the way I would think about okay. that. And as well as uh, he's asking about the right fit in terms of hires. Yeah, so it's, so no, that's a question and that's a problem with almost all the small yeah. businesses, you know, getting the right people in. In this business where he is, I think I would like to hire one quality guy rather than hiring the five, five guys who may not be of that great quality. Sure. And second point I think I would recommend to, to Bhavik is try to enroll the guy whosoever he or she he takes, you know, uh, excite him or her with the vision he has. Okay. And secondly, try to bring on the ownership basis, essentially share the share the money mm -hmm. which he gets. If he, if he, if he tries uh, to hire someone on the fixed pay basis, that will be very, very difficult. So that's the way to think, you know, as a new entrepreneur. Okay, so for a small business, uh, Bhavik, that's your recommendation coming in from our uh, experts tonight. There's always a market at different price points. So uh, the suggestion is that uh, you do look at 
other options as well. Our next query is coming to us on Facebook from Abu Bakr Khan. Abu Bakr has told us that uh, he's, uh, uh, the, their company is called Maintenance India. He says they provide on-demand home services with society management. He says they're an app in the maintenance space and have traction in Delhi, NCR, Hyderabad, Bengaluru, Mumbai, Pune, Chennai, essentially all the metros in the country. He says they have partners with more than 1,500 service providers. The question that he has for our experts tonight, he says he's facing a cash crunch. Uh, the problem is that as a startup entrepreneur is the cash crunch as well as the marketing. To overcome the problem of marketing, he says he needs funds to get funding. They have pitched almost every venture capital firm and angel investor, but have not been successful. He's written in tonight on our Facebook page to ask our experts for their suggestions. Yeah, this is a common uh, problem uh, faced by many startups. Uh, if he has a good business plan and he is able to convince the angel investor or a venture capital uh, fund, he should be able to access fund from them. But so far he has not been successful, so I think he should have a robust business plan. But then there are other avenues also, like he can take a mudra loan up to 10 lakhs rupees, uh, which is refinanced by SIDBI. Uh, he can approach the bank, cooperative bank, or there are many NBFCs, for example, who provide... Which would look favorable at someone who's in the space that he's in, because he's not in tech and he's not in the manufacturing, the typical manufacturing space. That is true. So uh, it's a, dif a very uh, difficult, I mean, a different type of uh, business he's into, like society management. But if you see in Mumbai, for example, especially in South Mumbai, these companies have come up because the society members don't have time to devote for the maintenance and management of the societies and it's become a specialized job so there are many uh, society maintenance companies which are operating and if they need funds i think uh, one of course uh, gradually one should have one's own funds or they should uh, they should tap the uh, friends relatives if not then angel funds venture capital funds banks mudra loans seed b there are many avenues he should explore Sure. And he also has larger peers like an urban club, which are doing things like this, have raised funding and are successful. Sure. And so uh, let me Sananda, take it in two parts. One yeah. is talking about the challenge on the marketing side, you know, the funds needed. See, Tomorrow. creation of the app or a website is the most easy thing you and me can do. Okay. What is the problem is how do you market it? How do you reach out to the customer, whether the people need that service really, and more importantly, even if they need, will they pay for that service? You know, sure. these are the challenges. It's not only this company or this business. I think this is the this is the problem. If you start with even the largest of this in the space, be it Amazon or the Flipkart or yeah. or the Snapdeal or the Word or the Paytm. Otherwise, they wouldn't be giving the kind of discounts they have been offering continuously, right? Too yeah. because customer acquisition is the largest cost. Customer retention is the yeah. second largest cost, which you can see in this space, be it Uber or be it, you know, the, the Ola as well. Yeah. So it, it, is, it is the problem. You have to accept it. Getting the customer is not easy. Mm -hmm. And he has to pump in, ready to be pumping in a lot of money, basically, on the marketing side. Okay. Now, coming back to the funding part, which you sure. talked about, he has pitched to several guys. I think the question he should be asking is, what is that the funds, venture funds, or the angel investors look for? Because if we flip the question, mm -hmm. see, I can go and pitch to 50 people what I have. But if I don't understand what they are looking for and how basically I can make it favorable to them, it is of no use. So what I would say is uh, ask Mr. Khan to go back to the drawing board and mm -hmm. I start asking question, what do the funds look for? Mm -hmm. And I as an investor can share that what people are looking for on the investment side is A, there should be a genuine problem. Mm. Number two, there should be a company or a business which is addressing that problem. Sure. We should have that, you know, that capability to demonstrate that we are the right guys to address the problem. Sure. We have the tools, we have people, we have products, we have whatever services required to address the problem. And sure. problem has to be large one so that the product or service which the company is offering can be scaled up easily. Sure. And third important point is when you do it, do it profitably. Abu Bakr, that's a very detailed answer for you if you're saying that you've pitched to several investors but no one has uh, shown any interest. The suggestion is you go back to the drawing board, take their feedback and see what it is they're looking for and therefore you're able to uh, pitch better and you're also able to then uh, get the kind of funding that you require. 
Our next uh, query is an email coming to us from G Narayana. Narayana has written to us saying they promote serving local food at restaurants as well as at school cafeterias. His question tonight for our experts, he says they require funds for business expansion. What are the modes and methods by which he can get funds? Also, what are the documents needed? He wants to understand how they can avail government loan facilities and what documents are needed. Uh, in part, has been answered in some of our previous questions. You were talking about Mudra, Sidbi, etc. You were talking about uh, what they should do to approach PE funds. But maybe we can talk about what's really going on in the food space. There are lots of innovation happening there, whether it's food tech or whether it's physical food delivery. For someone who's, again, looking at something niche, if he also, for this niche business, is struggling to find funds, then maybe just a broad-based question about how someone in the food space should be looking at raising funds. Funding requirement is similar to what we discussed yes. in the previous question. He is supplying food to restaurants and other eating houses. So it's not easy for him to really uh, access uh, finance. Uh, it depends on the size of his business, what kind of model he has got, whether there is scalability if he has to access fund, either equity or loan, uh, either from venture capital funds, angel funds, or loan from banks or NBFCs. Then he has to have a good business model. There should be a profitability. Uh, the business should be scalable in order that those people who uh, put in money by way of uh, equity should be able to exit. If it is a loan, he should be in a position to repay the loan with interest. So all these aspects have to be uh, taken into account. And only if the lenders or the equity investors are convinced that this business is scalable, is profitable, uh, going forward, then only they will lend the money. Thank you both very much for being with us here tonight and running our viewers through all of the queries and giving them your expert comments. Time for a break. On the other side, Tynor is in focus tonight on small giants. Do stay tuned. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight on Small Giants, we're putting the spotlight on Tynor. The medical aids market is rapidly changing in India and the demand may be multiplying, but it looks like you have a lot of companies that are also innovating in this space. One such company is Chandigarh-based Tynor. Shubangi Sinha travelled to Chandigarh to find out exactly how this market is growing and what this company is doing in this space. Take a look. The market for orthopaedic aids is slated to reach $2.5 billion by 2030. Tapping into this exponential demand, Tynor has been on the forefront of innovating and creating aids that are not only affordable but are also of high quality. Founded in 1993 by PJ Singh and AJ Singh, the company has been making waves in the healthcare space for over two decades. Dr. Singh, you embarked upon this journey of building Tynor over 20 years ago. Talk to me about what really was the gap in the market at that point in time and what really inspired you to start off in the first place. I went in for a very detailed market survey and I found that uh, orthopedic products are somehow not available in India. Either they are low cost and very low quality if they were manufactured in India or they were very high priced and yes, good in quality if they were imported. And I thought, yes, this is one concept. If we can develop a very high quality product and has affordability built in, we can definitely capture this market. Now talking about the products from Tynor, I want to talk about uh, two things. One being, how are you really able to price your products such that they're affordable? And secondly, what are the few things that you think set your product apart? You know, affordability comes from the concept of lean management. So lean management builds in lot of factors which brings down the cost. Now one can be that we do not have any supervisory staff. Second can be our rejection level is so low. Third is that the motivation of people is so high 
they manage themselves right and our productivity per man per hour is almost double than any other Indian company and it is almost comparable with the developed world. So, these are some of the factors you know they somehow bring together both the affordability on one hand and on the other hand a very high quality product. Now talking about the orthopedic aids industry, there is a huge gap that non-metro cities and smaller towns in the country are seeing when it comes to accessibility. What do you think are the few things that companies like you can do to perhaps bridge that gap? Uh, I would like to answer in both uh, you know ways that first of all these products are not much required at the moment in the rural areas. Why? Because hospitals and the tertiary care centers and mainly the professionals as we call as the orthopedic doctors are by and large concentrating in the urban markets, right. So, the cities have them. So, people from the rural will travel to these cities to get their treatment done. So, by and large they will buy the product in city itself, that is one part of it. But the second thing is yes, uh, as our um, uh, marketing team, marketing setup is maturing up. So, from tier 1 to tier 2 to tier 3 and now we are slowly moving towards to smaller towns and cities. That is one. But the other thing which is taking our product to the rural market is of course, the e-commerce. So, e-commerce yes, people in even rural areas have access and they get their products there. But by and large I still feel we are concentrating on the, on the cities rather than on the rural at the moment. Now in your experience, do you think that doctors uh, and physiotherapists in fact have to correct awareness about the aids that can be recommended to their patients? And on the other side, do you think that patients are in fact open to using such aids? I think you are right there that when we talk of the professionals on one hand, let's say the doctors, the orthopedic doctors, the physios or the ONPs, the syllabus when they are taught that does not contain much of orthopedic aids. So, uh, at that stage they do not learn much about that. When they come down to the practice, the focus of an orthopedic surgeon would be surgery, right. So, they consider these products uh, as, as a byproduct of the whole uh, treatment process or uh, so they do not perhaps were giving enough attention to it. But of late I have seen that more and more orthopedic surgeons are putting a lot of stress to having the right device for their patients post surgery, pre surgery. So, all these devices are getting more focus and importance. When we talk of the customer, the patient, I think lot of patient uh, patients are going to the net, Google is one uh, you know source of information and these are guys are getting a lot of information and some devices are being uh, self prescribed. So, they are off the shelf products. So, many patients they go to the chemist and buy these products. With a focus on using advanced technology to better product designs, Tynor has a state of the art production facility that has been able to provide solutions to over 8 crore consumers so far. Now, I am definitely understanding that innovation is extremely important to you at Tynor and I think with technologies like 3D printing, uh, prototyping etc. has also become very easy. How important do you really think innovation is and how are you able to ensure that your products are always cutting edge? See, I think uh, innovation 3-4 years back was not that important but now it is becoming very important. Rather without innovation, I think Tynor cannot survive. In the last two years, we have got some patents and a lot of design registrations and the driving force in innovation first is that we see that the profits in these innovative products is much higher and the second is that sales also in these products is much higher than the non-innovative products. So, when we compare, we do an analysis, there is a lot of uh, excitement about innovation and our focus is now on innovation. Now, for a company like yours, it's extremely important to have the R&D in place, which definitely means hiring the correct researchers. How are you really able to hire and retain them and uh, what are your top tips perhaps? Tynor has about uh, 1000 odd employees and uh, there is a lot of hiring being done. 
every day and our uh, you know growth in percentage would be about 20 to 25 percent every year in our people right so we think that uh, one advantage we have over others is that we are sitting in chandigarh chandigarh being a very beautiful city do most people who are educated don't want to leave chandigarh simply because they want to enjoy this life uh, when we talk of retention i think retention starts from so many things one is the infrastructure we have built up uh, a beautiful infrastructure where we want to provide them the best of what any good company of the world can provide so apart from infrastructure then we have a culture the culture can be you know giving them enough empowerment giving them enough place to express themselves you know so all these cultural things uh, is helping these young minds to to love this company and work for this company taking a larger global perspective of the orthopedic aids market now regions like north america have always been uh, advanced when it comes to orthopedic aids but may not have the kind of numbers that we are looking at going forward what do you really think are the few things that we can pick up from our global peers see why north american market has slowed down is a very simple reason first of all they have already reached a, a sort of a plateau where uh, further growth is little difficult but uh, this is not the case in india because as i earlier said that only 30% of the people at the moment are in the healthcare net so we have another 50 years when we will bring all these 70% in complete healthcare net and today the usage of orthopedic devices when we compare north america to india the difference is 1 is to 20 so uh, it will take a lot of time for us to reach that stage of prosperity where everybody gets healthcare and everybody gets all the products they need but yes there is a lot of learning we have to have from these developed nations and the learning i think is very clean and clear keep innovating keep getting the right products keep understanding your customer and then giving the right solutions dr singh we're into 2018 now and it is an interesting time for your market what are your expansion plans looking like for the next few years at tynor the company at the moment is at about 200 crores uh, of turnover so we have already expanded to have a capacity of about 400 crores so we look forward to a future expansion where uh, we are starting a new unit which will have a capacity of about 1000 crores so this is the kind of vision we are keeping for ourselves in the next 5 to 7 years with the strong distributor network spanning across 40 countries a keen eye for detailed design and a commitment to consumer satisfaction tynor might be well on its way to achieving its 5 year goal of a 100 million dollar turnover Completely out of time. Then on this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow, if you have any questions for us, do remember you can always write in. Our email ID is leaders of tomorrow times group dot com. Tweet at me at Sunand underscore J or our official Twitter handle LOT underscore ET Now. You can also reach us on our Facebook page. Leaders of Tomorrow at ET Now is our Facebook page. That number, otherwise that you see on your screen, is where you can reach us with your questions. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good night.